and I've come to a place in my heart where I know that it's really not so much about what you want in terms of what you manifest, it's who you are. You manifest what you become as a human being. And this program is about teaching you to become the highest consciousness being that you can be, to be aligned with your source, to be aligned with God. And when you are, you become a creator and a co-creator in your life. I'd like to open this program with a uh, poetic offering from Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who wrote The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. And he also wrote a poem that I used uh, earlier in my life in one of my earlier books, Real Magic. Listen to the words and ask yourself if, um, if, they really, if they really mean something to be true for you, if you really believe in what the poet is offering here. He says, what if you slept? And what if in your sleep you dreamed? And what if in your dream you went to heaven and there picked a strange and wonderful flower? And what if when you awoke, you held that flower in your hand? Ah, what then, the poet asks. Do you believe that it's possible to bring something from the world of the formless, from the world of a dream, into the world of the physical? The poet was speaking metaphorically, but I am not. This is really a program about applying those words in your own reality. Most of us were raised to become ordinary. And I'm not putting down ordinary, but ordinary is just not good enough for me. Ordinary is you go through your life and you fill out the forms and you pay your taxes and you do what your parents tell you and you're honorable and you're honest and you're a good citizen and then you die. Extraordinary is something very, very different. This is about recognizing within yourself that there's something very, very extraordinary that you haven't been trained to believe in to come to a place where you can apply it and put it into your life. And I want to say to you that I have been working in my life at living an extraordinary life. And so many powerful things have happened to me. I'll be sharing with you throughout this program. But more than that, you can go way beyond ordinary. You can go way beyond just being average. There's not an average person watching this show. There's not an average person in this room tonight. All of us are extraordinary. We just have to come to believe it. There was a friend of mine, her name was Portia Nelson. Portia passed away a few years back. She lived up in Seattle. And she was at a seminar, and they asked her to, and they asked everyone to write on a five by seven sheet of paper or card, uh, the five chapters of their life. They only wanted to give them five by seven cards because they didn't want to get too wor wordy. And Portia Nelson sat down and wrote these words about the five chapters of her life. And I thought I would share them here with you. They're so beautiful. She said, chapter one of my life. I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault and it takes forever to find a way out. Chapter two of my life. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. It isn't my fault. And it still takes a long time to get out. Chapter three of my life. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. <laughs> it's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It's my own fault. And I get out immediately. 
Chapter four of my life. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter five of my life. I walk down. Walking down another street means leaving behind ordinary. And when I use the word ordinary, it has deep and profound meanings to me. Ordinary just simply isn't enough. Ordinary is when you want to become average and to fit in. But to get to extraordinary, what you do is you have to consult the invisible place within yourself. And this is called your soul. And your soul, well, I jotted down a few words about the soul based on a lecture I heard from a great teacher of mine who lived in Bulgaria. He was an initiatic science teacher. And his lecture was very profound. And I wrote these words after listening to one of his recorded lectures. He said, the ideal of the soul, the thing it asks for is neither knowledge nor light nor happiness. The ideal of the soul is space immensity the one thing your soul needs is to be free free to expand and reach out and to embrace the infinite yes the ideal of the soul is infinity it is miserable when it is circumscribed and restricted it is a fragment of the universal soul which is infinite that's what I speak about here in this program the the need to move beyond just fitting in. The need to move past being circumscribed. The soul does not like when you get fenced in, when it is told what to do, when it's told it has limitations, when it's told it can't become that. And so many of us go through our life with these enormous limitations that we've placed upon ourselves that have been handed to us from the time that we were little boys and little girls. If you look on the screen, you'll see of something that uh, is very important and powerful to me. I was swimming not too long ago up in Minneapolis. I went to see my daughter, uh, Tracy, and up and down I would swim the pool, and every time I would look up, I would see this written on the wall. And I thought, as I was preparing to do this program, this is just so important and significant. If you would like to accomplish something, you must first expect it of yourself. And my question to you is, what do you expect of yourself? Do you expect to be able to perform miracles, to attract into your life the kind of prosperity that you are entitled to? Do you expect that you can manifest the kind of relationships that you would like? In order to be able to have these kinds of expectations for yourself, you have to make a dramatic change, a dramatic shift. You must change what's possible for you and what you believe is possible for you. But the question becomes, who am I? Yeah, I've been teaching philosophy for 40 years now, either at the high school level or junior high school level or university level, graduate school, and now in stages all over the world and in front of audiences such as this, watching at home and here this evening. Who are you? And what is real? My teacher in India, his name was Nisargadatta Maharaj. He was asked the question, Swami, what is real, Master? What is real? And his response was, that is real which never changes so what part of you is real by that definition who are you that never changes so many of us believe that we are our bodies <laughs> i don't know about you but uh, <laughs> this body that i'm in right now is changing all the time very fast as a matter of fact in fact i Wayne Dyer, the I that is I, 
have been in many, many bodies since I incarnated for this first time here on this planet, right here, 71 years ago. And I have been in toddler bodies, baby bodies, teenage bodies, macho bodies, <laughs> mustache bodies, <laughs> endless bodies I have been in with my little ones and my eight children. And the fact of it is that when you think about it, when I was in the 20-year-old body that I was in, I really thought it was real. Didn't you? I mean, even the body that you and all of you look at your body and think, well, let's see, I was in a 20-year-old body. And um, is it real? Was it real? Well, you believe that it was real, but I've been looking for that 20-year-old body for 50 years now. <laughs> I can't find it. And the fact of it is, the body that you're in right now is not who you are because it doesn't meet that fundamental definition of what is real. What is real is what never changes. The fact is that who you are keeps occupying new bodies every single moment that you are here on this planet. It was a great poet. Her name was Emily Dickinson. I feel like she was, must have been a sister, a, a, a soulmate of mine. She once had a poem, she said, uh, holding up a handful of dust, she would reach down and say, this quiet dust was gentlemen and ladies and lads and girls, was laughter and ability and sighing and frocks and curls. This passive place, a summer's nimble mansion where bloom and bees fulfilled their oriental circuit then ceased like these. That's who all of us are if we identify ourselves with our body. The fact is that everything in this physical universe doesn't meet the definition of what is real. Who you are is that soul that I spoke about a few moments ago. That soul that says, I want to expand. I want to be free. I want to go to a place where I understand that who I am is birthless, deathless, changeless, and live from that place. Because what this involves fundamentally is reprogramming yourself from the belief system that has been your ego. The part of us that has come to believe that who we are is what we have, and who we are is what we do. And who we are is what other people think of us, like our reputation. And who we are is separate from each other. And most egregiously, who we are is separate from God, from our source. And so we've been raised and taken out into the world and said, go out there and prove who you are by achieving, by accumulating, by getting other people to like you. <clears throat> I wrote a book and did a film not too long ago called The Shift. And in there I spoke about and used these words. The direction we take in life is far more important than the place that our ego parks us in this present moment. That who we are is this divine, infinite being that keeps occupying new bodies endlessly until we leave this body and then move on and there is no beginning there is no end there is only now each and every one of us so the soul the part of you that is extraordinary the part of you that came into this world and knows I can be anything I can do anything I can accomplish anything that I place my attention on. Because if you want to accomplish something, you must first just expect it of yourself. And this means changing around the expectations that you've been conditioned to believe are your dharma or are your destiny. I am limited. I am <coughs> not entitled to prosperity. I am unable to deal with my physical ailments. I need something else. I need to take pills in order to do it. I need to have somebody else do it for me. That within each and every one of us, 
there is this marvelous knowing that is really and truly God ourselves, each and every one of us.